Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with the first in a series of videos just looking at one or two key industries in the UK. Little uh, short overviews, if you like, to help give you a little bit of application uh, ahead of exams. Now, I've deliberately chosen these videos, these industries, because I think they match quite nicely specific market structures. So the idea is to spend five or ten minutes looking at an industry, the key data, some key features, uh, to give you some great application that you might well use in an exam paper. By the way, one area that examiners are really keen to stress ahead of students taking their exams is for them to showcase their knowledge of the subject and add contextual applications to their answers. So the question might say, for example, using an industry of your choice. Well, hopefully this might be useful. Here's a quick video on the UK water industry. So the water sector in England and Wales was privatised in 1989, well over 30 years ago. Scottish water, by the way, remains in state hands. Now, most water and sewerage companies are regional monopolies. That means they have a regional dedicated pipe network, water supplies to households and businesses and sewage treatment plants and so on. And what that means is that household customers, including you and I, we cannot choose to switch uh, choose our supplier or switch our supplier. Competition, therefore, is basically very limited. That's not true anymore at a business level. I'll say a bit more about that in a second. So water supply is therefore a good example of what economists call a natural monopoly, and that's an industry with very big, very large economies of scale. When you have a monopoly of this type, it means the industry does require regulation. Some key stats on the water and wastewater sector in England during 2020. Very high drinking water quality, Britain's right up there in terms of that, 99.96%. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of kilometres of uh, water pipes owned by the regional water companies. But nearly 3 billion litres of water leak from the system each day. That is a massive level. It's a great stat to have in mind when we think about the efficiency and the effectiveness, for example, of water industry regulation. Over 25 million properties connected to the public water supply, over a thousand water treatment works, uh, lots of pipe bursts, <laughs> nearly half a million kilometres of sewers, much of which were built, by the way, decades ago. Uh, and uh, crucially, that figure at the bottom there, the amount of investment by water companies uh, from 2015 to 2020, 44 billion. But is that enough? The water cycle, and this is just basically lifted from a geography website, the water cycle, of course, starts with precipitation and, and obviously ends with uh, things like pumping stations and uh, water treatment works, uh, water storage, and, of course, the network of pipes all the way through to households and businesses. So most aspects of this industry suggest a natural monopoly, uh, which involves one firm. But the government, via Ofwat, remember Ofwat's the regulator, the government's attempted, attempted to induce some competition at retail level, not for you and I, but for businesses that have very large annual water consumption. Now, a natural monopoly occurs when the most efficient number of firms in the industry is one. And a natural monopoly will typically have very high fixed costs and low marginal costs. Therefore, the long and average cost falls over a large range of output. Let's just quickly work through the diagram on this. That natural monopoly, just in terms of cost, uh, the, the, the bigger the scale of production, the lower the unit cost. There's the average cost curve. It's basically a, an enveloped curve which envelops a series of short-run costs. So the scale of a natural monopoly hints at uh, a natural monopoly. And the shape of the average cost curve means it's tough for smaller challenger firms, in, uh, new entrants, to come into a market and make a profit. But it might be possible to successfully enter the market at retail level, providing what's called final mile services to customers. That's things like billing and other aspects of, of customer service. So there is a need for regulation of the industry uh, to ensure that the industry delivers value for consumers and also critically, of course, uh, meets its long-term environmental uh, targets. Off what is the regulator for, um, uh, for the water industry? And it sets wholesale price limits for each water company alongside a range of performance targets, leakage reduction, trying to, trying to reduce pollution incidents, and of course, over long term, trying to encourage people to be smarter in the use of water. This data is quite interesting. Just background, again, it just shows the average bill in the UK in 2021, I think this data is, yeah, 2021-22. 
So quite a big spread. The, the water bills vary. The highest is southwest water, 488 483 pounds per year. And of course it varies because there's different costs of delivering infrastructure and services. Water bills have risen by more than inflation since privatisation. So they have gone up in real terms. Uh, partly that's because the regulator allows the water companies to do this in order to generate the profit, which can then be invested in the water sector. Here's the revenues of the water and sewer utilities, these regional ones. The biggest one by some distance is Thames Water, uh, or £2.1 billion. Pounds. That's based in Reading in Berkshire. And I think it provides you know, drinking water and wastewater treatment for well over 15 million customers. All the way down to Wessex Water with a, a revenue of just over half a billion. Now, off what is the regulator, and you may well have been revising regulatory failure or regulatory capture as part of your revision. And off what has been criticised by MPs and industry experts for allowing investors and uh, CEOs to enrich themselves whilst failing to invest in infrastructure. According to the FT, and I've taken this slide mainly from an article I read, total spending on, on water and sewage infrastructure actually fell 15%. Uh, just under, under five billion uh, last year, uh, and a very small percentage of rivers in the UK now meet a good ecological status standard, the minimum standards. So there's a, a significant problem with river, lake, and coastal water pollution, linked to multiple breaches of uh, of uh, of the sewage network, the discharge of raw sewage into tributaries. According to the FT, since 1990, so 30 years. Water companies, which were privatised with no debt, have borrowed £53 billion, the equivalent of £2,000 per household, much of which has been used to pay £72 billion in dividends. That's great application if you get a question on nationalisation, for example. Now, a little bit on competition. This is quite important, worth knowing about. So in 2017, the UK government, operating through Ofwat, they introduced competition, it's called Open Water, um, in, the, uh, in the water supply and services industry at retail level for businesses. So basically those, those water companies we've just talked about, Thames Water, Wessex Water, Northumberland Water, etc. Those are the utilities. They act as wholesalers and they manage the water and sewage network. But business consumers, they can stick with those, they can stick with Thames Water if they want to, but they can now choose their own water provider in the same way you might choose your broadband supplier or your electricity and gas provider. And uh, there's some evidence that entrants have come into the market. Three good examples, Conserve Aqua, Everflow and Castle Water. So the market for business water supply services has been deregulated. Quite a big change, probably the biggest change to the water sector since privatisation. Some big businesses have actually been granted their own self-supply licence. Perhaps they've got access to water bores and, uh, and things which allow them to generate their own water supply. Some, and if you've got huge um, capacity maybe as a business to generate your own water supply. In the same way, for example, that companies like Amazon and uh, Tesla are becoming huge generators of their own electricity, for example. So here it is, open water um, uh, is the, basically the platform for this new style of competition. Uh, since the water market opened just over five years ago, uh, about over a million more customers can now choose their retail service and perhaps shop around to get the best deal. And here's a good example. Here's Castle Water, just lifted a little snagget from the website, encouraging businesses perhaps who want to switch suppliers uh, to, uh, to uh, switch to them. Don't forget, they're not the wholesale. They're not managing the network. They're just operating the retail service business. Things like billing and advice on leakages, all that kind of stuff. Lots of motivations for businesses perhaps to switch. They may well save water bills. In particular, a lot of people uh, switch if they think the water metering and billing is inaccurate. Something like two-thirds of bills are found to be inaccurate. So just getting better metering and sensors and things. Supermarkets might have lots of stores across the country and they might want to consolidate their billing with one provider. Uh, there may be better consumer, uh, customer service and also some value added services such as advice on water efficiency, advice in small scale investments to meet leakage targets. 
So be aware that there is now a little bit of competition at business level in the water sector in the UK. Well, what are some of the key issues? Just uh, briefly, what are some of the key issues that you might want to think about? Why might this be a favoured topic of exam boards? First of all, there's the debate about ownership. I mean, should uh, water industry was privatised in 1989, which... Does that have to be the case? Should the water industry be nationalised? Should those regional utilities be taken back into state ownership? The economics of natural monopoly. What are the benefits and the costs of having regional water monopolies? Will the introduction of competition at retail level uh, be successful? And what about households? How should, how should water bills for you and I be regulated? Should water companies be allowed to raise bills in excess of inflation? to fund infrastructure? Should there be links between CEO pay and performance, for example? Should the regulator off what be much tougher in terms of how it handles the regional water companies? And then there's a whole issue of externalities and pollution. How best to tackle sewage discharges? Uh, are fines enough, for example? And behavioural economics, how best to tackle water scarcity and reduce people's consumption? Uh, many water companies have fairly low customer satisfaction rates. Thames Water comes lowest and Southern Water, uh, Portsmouth Water, a round of applause for Wessex and Port Portsmouth Water, they come top. And my favourite, Northumberland Water. Uh, this is the, uh, a really staggering slide, penultimate slide. This is the number of times, according to Ofwad, the water firms discharged raw sewage into England waterways in 2021. Now, the water companies are supposed to self-report this. So these figures may well be an underestimate. But United Utilities, 81,000 times. Yorkshire Water, 70,000 times. And with this, is, this is staggering levels of raw sewage discharge in England and around the country. And this uh, last point about using water. This would be a classic uh, sort of economics question, wouldn't it? What policies might be effective in getting people to reduce their daily water usage? So uh, England's 142 litres per person. It's higher in Scotland. I don't know why, but it, it is. Can we bring that down year on year to help reduce water scarcity? So there we are. Uh, hopefully this was useful. Just a quick overview on the UK water industry. If you have a little bit of knowledge on these kind of industries for each market structure, I think you're going to be in great shape for the exams. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. And see you again sometime soon.